All right. Davis in Toronto, thanks for waiting. You're looking to defend against atheist claims about slavery in the Bible. Uh, That's for, right. For the record, uh, the claims about slavery in the Bible aren't atheist. That's right. I think I got the phrasing wrong. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Not in my position. But first up, thanks a lot for having me on the show. I'm a big fan, uh, and I really like what you guys do, so thanks a lot for that. Thanks. So there seems to be some kind of garbling with your mic or your cell phone or whatever, so just please be patient. It may be hard to understand you on occasion. Certainly no problem. Is it better now? Yes. Okay, good. So what I wanted to do was uh, talk uh, or defend against uh, claims that the Bible is in favor of slavery, or at least in some kind of traditional interpretation of that. Uh, so yes, there's. Have a you lot got a Bible handy? Because <laughs> uh, I so do. The Bible does. It outlines a lot of rules. Yeah. How I, to treat slaves. I, I actually have and I, a Bible uh, right here. So I mean, we could maybe go through it together. Because when I did my video on slavery, that's all I did was point out what the Bible actually says. So let's. No, I I completely agree with you, and I agree that slavery is wrong politically. But politically, slavery exists. It exists metaphysically, and what I mean by that is you can be a slave in today, even today's Western society. Yeah, I'm not talking about yourself. metaphoric slavery. I'm talking about actually owning people as property, which is what the Bible advocates. Okay, fair enough. But slavery exists. Uh, it, it exists regardless of what the politics of the day are. Okay. Like, it exists. You can exist as wage slavery. Davis. You can exist as slavery Davis. Your own addiction. Davis. Mm-hmm. None of that, okay, none of this is remotely relevant. Does the Bible in Exodus 21 and other places advocate for the permissibility of owning people as property and beating them as long as they don't die within a couple days? Yes, yes. Then, then what difference does it make if in the modern world you might be a metaphorical wage slave? That is a completely irrelevant thing when we are talking about what the Bible supports. Uh, no, it, it isn't, because what the Bible recognizes is that uh, no matter what the political reality is, no matter what, how, if you outlaw slavery or not, it's going to exist. Bullshit. And you need to Bullshit. channel it. Bullshit. This is, this is the most embarrassing apologetic I've ever heard on this, okay? Does the Bible allow people to own slaves as property, pass them on to their kids, beat them as long as they don't die within a couple days, and does it have special rules for what you do with Hebrew slaves versus your non-Hebrew slaves? Yes or no? Yes. Have we not outlawed yeah. that form of slavery? Oh, uh, yes, we have. So, when you say that it'll always be around and can't be outlawed, that's not true. Would you well, like would to you start over? There's. Well, what I'm trying to get at, uh, Matt, is that you will always have servitude or slavery or indentured... I don't give a shit. If you were God... Would you ever include a passage that says it's okay to own people as property? Well, it depends on if I'm appealing to politics or uh, something deeper than that. Uh, uh, wait, wait. He was Did a slave you not to politics, hear, apparently. God, God, <laughs> God is appealing to politics? God isn't making proclamations about morality? Yes. He was being PC. Morality, morality. Yes. Yeah, you have a weak-ass God. I'm moving on. <laughs> If your God can be trumped by Trump, you have a weak-ass God. Next. Yeah, not worth worshiping, is it? Yeah. It, oh, well, the Bible, yes, it advocates for slavery, which means the Bible's advocating for something that you think is immoral and you think God thinks is immoral, and your excuse is that God needed to kowtow to political perceptions at the time, and yet it was okay for God to tell you not to eat shrimp and not to wear fabrics of mixed clothing, and that if a man lies with another man as he lies with a woman, they've committed an abomination. Wow, you've got a God that's selectively strong against homosexuals and shellfish, but is fine with people being owned as property for thousands of years before he bothers to, oh wait, no, 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 he didn't bother to correct it when Jesus Jesus comes down and takes over. Jesus didn't say, hey, you know that stuff you guys said about slavery? That was wrong. You shouldn't have done that. You got something wrong in your Bible. That never happened. Where's Bible part three? Where's the newest update that says, you know what? Not only was the Old Testament wrong about slavery, but Jesus and Paul were wrong about slavery too. We don't know how we screwed that up, but we did. We'd like to fix that now. Has it even been corrected in the... In the Quran or the Book of Mormon has it. No, your devotion, <laughs> your devotion to your religion 
I am sorry to say, makes you look stupid. When you bend over backwards to try to make excuses for immorality, you are sacrificing your humanity. You are putting yourself in a morally inferior position, and you're doing it primarily because you cannot acknowledge that your holy book got something wrong. Even when the last caller acknowledged that the holy book got something wrong, where did we go? We went on a Jordan Peterson extravaganza about metaphoric slavery and wage slaves. Well, that's bullshit. The question is, is the Bible a good book to inform people about the morality of certain issues, including slavery? And the answer is no. It's the one and only correct answer. And as long as you keep trying to make excuses for it, I'll keep batting you around like a cat toy and sending you on your way so that the next apologist can call in and somebody someday might actually be honest about this and say, yeah, I think the Bible is wrong, as Ray Comfort did when he said that he didn't believe everything that was in the Bible, because Ray, while many people just consider him to be an idiot, was at least smart enough not to go down the I'm going to make excuses for slavery route, one of the easiest things to avoid doing. I don't know. <laughs> it's... It's sad. Yep. Yep. And, and, and to think that for the bulk of my life, um, I was in that mindset. Yeah, yeah. The problem or the difference, I suppose, is when I came up and realized that here's a passage where the Bible is absolutely advocating for something that is clearly immoral, then anyone with any sense can see as immoral. Instead of saying oh, well, God is mysterious, or God, maybe God had to talk to those people that way and he was trying to soften slavery and make it nicer so that eventually it would get better. Because, you know, you can't ever really... I, I don't think I ever went down that. I, yeah. I, I am too honest in the sense that I went, wow, that's clearly wrong. And if that's wrong and what it's in the Bible, wrong? what else is wrong? Yeah. Which gets us back to the first caller. I, I had a friend who just, who just rationalized it by saying, I don't understand yeah. and shut off her brain which is just sad. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, it's fine to say you don't understand. It's just that once you've acknowledged you don't understand, you don't have an answer, don't pretend that you do. Don't try to start making excuses for something. I don't know, but maybe. I don't know, but maybe. Okay, but maybe does not a solid foundation for a religious belief make. 